What are the Faroe Islands? There are many ways to answer this question, and in this video we'll try to cover as many of them as possible. One answer which will certainly be correct for the foreseeable future is that the Faroe Islands are an island group in the North Atlantic, between the British Isles and Iceland, with the closest neighbours being Scotland around 300 kilometres away, followed by Iceland and Norway at around 500 and 600 kilometres respectively. The remote islands were created through volcanic activity around 50 to 60 million years ago, during a time when Greenland just left Europe towards the North American continent. Slowly erupting fissures between the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates have built up hundreds of square kilometers of basalt and ashes over millions of years. Once tectonic plates moved the plateau away from the volcanic zones, the forces of winds in the ocean started taking over, slowly eroding it to the shape that we know today. The constant battle has created a rugged landscape which is characterized by steep cliffs and smooth layered mountains. The final touch to today's Faroe Islands was given during the recent ice ages, which have buried the landmass, smoothening the rugged terrain and deepening the cliffs and fjords even further. This answers to purely geographical, what are the Faroe Islands? But there are many more aspects to cover. Historically, the islands have likely first been settled by folks from the British Isles around the 4th to 6th century. And they soon got visitors from Norwegian emigrants during the 9th century, who didn't approve of the monarchy in their homeland. Their plan did not work out as they hoped though. Around the turn of the millennia, war broke out between the two largest islands, leading to the leader of the southern clan fleeing back to Norway. Instead of being greeted with open arms, the Norwegian king, Olaf Tryggvason, equipped him with an army and ordered him to seize the Faroe Islands on his behalf, after which Norway held on to the possession for the following 800 years. During this time, the Nordic countries entered a personal union called the Kalmar Union, which united the countries of Norway and Denmark. When this marriage came to an end in the beginning of the 19th century, not Norway, but Denmark took the Faroe Islands with it during its independence. Over the following decades, the Faroese people experienced a cultural awakening and the desire for independence from the Danes grew. Icelandic independence from Denmark after the First World War inflamed this desire even more, but it wasn't until the end of the Second World War that a referendum was held, yielding a result for independence with 50.7%. The Faroese parliament moved swiftly and just four days after the election, the chairman of the Faroese parliament declared independence. This series of events was much to the displeasure of the Danish king, who swooped in a week later and dissolved the Faroese parliament, voiding any decisions of the past few days. Another election was held later in the year, with the Remain parties now in favor. While the Faroe Islands have received a lot of self-governing rights since then, the status quo has remained the same to this date and is officially considered a self-governing nation under the external sovereignty of the Kingdom of Denmark. So does self-governing nation mean it's a country? Well, it depends on who you ask. Looking at the FIFA World Cup, for example, the international tournament where all countries of the world compete against each other, the Faroe Islands are participating as a country. Regarding the Olympic Games, however, Faroe East athletes are only allowed to compete under the Danish flag. UNESCO, on the other hand, recognizes it as a standalone country. The Faroe East people have their own language and trade treaties. They make their own laws, they live on a defined territory, and they hoist their own flag. But if you want to be technically correct, it is not a country. So what else are the Faroe Islands? They are certainly unique in many ways. If you enjoy snowy winters and lush summers, the Faroe Islands may not be the best place for you. Located in the middle of the warm North Atlantic currents, it boasts some of the most stable year-round temperatures, despite its subpolar location. Average daily temperatures only fall to 4 degrees Celsius in the winter, but also only climb to 13 in the summer. So if you're tired of unpredictable weather, the Faroe Islands have got you covered. Just pack a sweater and a thick raincoat, regardless of the season. While this climate may not be for everybody, the very photogenic Atlantic Puffin thinks it's perfect. One thing this bird shares with the Faroe East people is the love for fish, which is an absolute integral part of their economy. Various forms of fish, for example, fresh, dried, smoked or frozen, make up over 85% of its exports, making it one of the least diverse economies in the world. This dependency on one industry brings with it a huge risk and many countries in similar situations are facing big struggles. The same cannot be said for the Faroe Islands, however. With a GDP per capita of over 69,000, it is almost the same level as the United States and surpasses its Danish overlords. I hope this video gave you a little better understanding of what the Faroe Islands are. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. Thanks for watching. Cheers.